Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining CaseWorks. CaseWorks helps law firms improve profitability with a trusted outsourced resource that facilitates cost-effective operational sale while converting overhead to acceptable case costs. Welcome, Susan Barfield, CEO of CaseWorks, and Dave Thomas, VP of Business Development for Law Tigers. Today, we are talking about grassroots strategies for personal injury lawyers, something that I know Dave knows a ton about. Um, and Susan actually has been able to apply CaseWorks to her own business. So we're going to talk um, a little bit about the B2B side and a lot about the personal injury side. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you, John. Um, Dave, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and about Law Tigers? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I've been with Law Tigers going on about four years now. My background is uh, prior to Law Tigers, about 20 years in, in healthcare, uh, talent acquisition as an uh, executive. And, and, and so uh, making the switch over to the legal field was definitely a, a breath of fresh air. And it's always exciting to, to have a new challenge. And, and but I've had a, a blast the, the last three and a half, four years here at Law Tigers, building out our, our memberships across the country. Uh, for all of you guys that are familiar with us or, or some that's not, we are an itch motorcycle marketing firm and we have a, a comprehensive marketing pro program that is designed to generate high value motorcycle cases for our members uh, across the country. And I currently serve as VP of business development and uh, definitely enjoying what I'm doing. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, so grassroots marketing is a large component of what you do at Law Tigers. For those that aren't familiar with grassroots marketing, can you give us a little bit of background on what grassroots marketing is? Yeah, so grassroots marketing, you know, I, I, I tend to strip things down a little bit, as I think most people would say, a uh, word of mouth, creating a referral engine. Uh, but, you know, to its truest form, 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 it's out there building those, those relationships and making those meaningful connections to uh, invoke um, a, a relationship uh, through a more so authentic approach. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I always say that it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to not like someone once you've actually gotten to know them and, and understand their story. And so uh, that's what we try to do at Law Tigers. We, we tell our story and, and, and through the process, um, you know, we were able to, to tap into the logically and emotionally uh, connection of, of potential prospects and also partners and the end goal is is for you know to to create those evangelists in the community and allow them to talk voluntarily about your business and to repeat that over and over again and 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 hence uh, there goes your your power of word of mouth marketing and uh, it creates a one heck of a referral program and engine for your your firm or company and, and it's funny because what you would think what works in the real world and in interpersonal relationships would apply to the business world, right? I actually met both of you through referral relationships. And it's a, it's a very natural thing, right? You build a relationship with someone, you earn their trust. If a business relationship comes up, you do business together. And then when the time comes for someone to ask for a recommendation for something, you of course go back to the well and what has worked for you in the past. And the same thing applies to, to personal injury firms, right? If a a plaintiff has a great experience with a law firm, they're going to want to then go and refer someone else who is in their network when they need an attorney back to the, the lawyer that did a great job for them. Um, Absolutely. How, how have you seen this applied specifically to the PI lawyers? Maybe how would it, it would differ from another execution of grassroots marketing, but specifically for PI lawyers, how have you seen this be applied? Well, you know, I can only speak to to law tigers because we do that just for PI firms, and and you know, you know, for our, our business, we have three uh, mediums. If, if you're not familiar, um, and, and so uh, one of which is is digital marketing, of course, and traditional advertisement, and then grassroots. But the huge indicator for us, and when we when we look at the data, is thirty to forty percent of our business is directly tied to our relationships in the community through grassroots marketing. And, and so it's it's the efforts uh, that we put towards a, a segmented group of people, uh, which are, are the writer, writing community for us. And we, we target them, but we also go out there and, like I said, build those connections and relationships. Um, you know, if you're if you're doing it correctly, and, and I mean, it's it's you really should in, in invoke and, and create, you know, those connections where now it's, it's almost spreading viral, very similar to what we're doing to, in today's 
digital world, right? I think the the goal, even through social platforms, you're you're growing your network, but you know, and and in much respect, you're growing at a faster pace than you can do by getting in your car and, and, and shaking hands and winning friends and influencing people. But you know, the, I, I think one challenge in and and really, you know, setting forth uh, your strategy solely on uh, a digital strategy or a social strategy is that you don't have the opportunity to create you know that authentic relationship and and we know that you know the end game uh from uh you know from a product or a firm uh to the end user or to a potential prospect it's all about who they like and trust and so we, we feel that through grassroots that gives us a competitive advantage and so we're doing that across the country for uh you know in 32 states uh, 47 markets for firms and it, it's working out beautifully uh but it also complements our other marketing strategies. And I know that we're probably going to touch on that later in, in, in the discussion. Yeah, absolutely. H how do you go about measuring the effectiveness of grassroots strategies, right? It, it touches branding somewhat, um, but yeah. is there a way to quantify it? Yeah, um, you know, I, you know, I've been doing this for a while and I started my, my career in talent acquisition. And, and the one thing you always want to track is, you know, how did they hear about us, right? Where are you getting your business from? I think that's transferable over into uh, business development or anything that, that's growing a clientele base. And so, um, you know, now there is some, I, I think, some margin in, in that in that number. But I can tell you our uh, higher percentage of, of, of app or strategies that we track, and it's normally word of mouth, that is sitting around 38 to 40 percent. Now, much of that, uh, you know, can be, you know, kind of travel through our traditional uh, strategies, but also uh, digital play as well. But, uh, you know, for what we what we do, uh, you know, it's worth this weight in gold because it's 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 creating those evangelists in the community that are just repeating those efforts. And and once again, it's, it just really helps us move the, the bottom line and, 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 and scale at a quicker rate. So Susan, obviously referrals are, are a really important source of business for law firms, um, but it, it applies not just to law firms, to other businesses as well. And you know, we talked about uh, earlier how a lot of your business, a lot of the firms that work with Caseworks have actually come through referrals. Can you talk about how to take a positive customer experience and turn that into a referral for a business, whether it's a law firm or, or a B2B entity? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and just to you know comment a little bit on you know Caseworks has grown pretty much doubled um, year over year since we started in 2015, and essentially it's been all word of mouth. So we've provided a great service, um, and and kind of you know what you said, Dave, is uh, you're you're trying to create those raving fans, and um, just being able to law firms just um, especially for mass tort they just don't have the infrastructure to be able to um, handhold and provide that level of service to their plaintiffs and so that's where caseworks has has really um, you know highlighted our services as far as being able to um, take care of those clients and through the case development pipeline and so as I mentioned we've we've grown year over year doubled in size and then I the one thing that I would probably recommend is not really focusing on that referral just you know do everything you can to focus on creating a great client experience yeah absolutely agree with that if you can make sure that the customer is happy the client is happy law firm is happy um what goes around comes around and and that referral will come back at some point when the opportunity arises uh dave how important is a firm's reputation and how does a firm go about improving it over time yeah you know it's 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 highly important uh to start off with that it, it's 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 your brand it, it's it's who people believe you are in the community right and and so how do you add credibility credibility to your name to your company uh and you know it's it's at the forefront of opening up those relationships that's going to result in business for you and you know i i think that uh you know uh i, I use this word a bunch but you know it's it's building those you know positive moment, moments of truth with your audience and the way to do that is is to 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 get in front of them to get in front of them to be exactly where they are share, share those similar interests same synergies uh, within your company. So what we do is we do a lot of, of partnering with, with similarity companies that complement Wall Tiger, such as Dell Helmet, 
or you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, different Harley Davidson dealerships and and different bike shops. And so, you know, we all have the same common interests, but we can all support each other. And then, you know, there's there's a credibility circle that's that surrounded the core strategy and, and what we're doing and building and growing our, our, our database, but also our, our potential uh, clients, because we know that, you know, riders is such a um, un, uh, underserved and, and fragmented group and, and sometimes misperceived. And, and, and so uh, with, with our strategy, actually jumping into the trenches with them, uh, our credibility is through the roof. And, and that's what really has positioned us to be the leading motorcycle marketing firm in the nation. And um, and like Susan had said, you know, she's seen tremendous growth and doubling and tripling. Uh, you know, three years ago when I started, we had uh, just seven markets, and now we're at forty-seven, and that's even through a pandemic year. So uh, it's 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 real. These numbers are are, are actual numbers, and, it, and it's really through word of mouth and referral. The referral engine is is incredible. So let's touch on the pandemic for a minute. Right. Grassroots, you traditionally think these are in-person interactions. How have your grassroots campaigns evolved and changed during the pandemic? That's a great question. And, and I love it because, you know, I think for, for most of us marketers or those that are just providing services, it just made us better. Right. It really forced us to get off our lazy butts and get creative and think outside of the box, far outside the box, because we were shook. And, all right. Every, I mean, our world was turned up, upside down. Uh, but those that are resilient, uh, like Susan, uh, company and, my, and, and Law Tigers, uh, it forced us to be creative. And so some of the things that we did, John, is, uh, you know, we were able to, to, to really rally with first responders, right? Because we know that they're on the front lines and they needed resources. They needed support. And, and so we, we jumped right in. Uh, we developed, you know, uh, you know co-branded uh, uh, mask at the time when, when it was, you know, recommended in, in our community here in the state of Arizona. Uh, we did a lot of things with, with providing, you know, food drives and, 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 and really supporting the riding community as well. We had uh, uh, firms that uh, did that independently uh, to Law Tigers as well that we provided products for them where they were given out to the community. So, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the pandemic allowed us to, to do a couple of things. And, and that's, you know, really show up, show up when, and when, when the times were, were really challenging. And uh, I think that those that did that. You know, we're smart enough to think outside the box and jump into the trenches. They're benefiting from it greatly today. Uh, this is one of our best years uh, that, since I've been here, and, and I can uh, directly tie that to uh, the work that was done during the pandemic year. It, it was it was uh, meaningful, and we did it from the heart. And then obviously we're reaping the reward because the relationships are outstanding. That's yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, and I was I was just going to add that that reminded me, Dave. Um, Caseworks did something similar, and um, we weren't um, during that time period. We were just focused on um, how can we help the community. Um, Caseworks has been a remote company since day one, so it didn't impact us. We we were already working from home, but we started to see our partners just. I mean, their lives were turned upside down. You know, they're trying to manage. Um, you know, their, their case volume, they're trying to manage um, their employees, trying to get them to home. So what we did is we offered, uh, like, I loved how you said, just show up. So we, we showed up by offering our services at cost. So we weren't trying to make money. We were just like, hey, we can provide our services. We'll do it at cost just to help you through this time. And um, showing up and, you know, offering those types of services just developed, a, a, you know, some deep relationships that, th like you said, like, this is going to be our best year. And so when we were super concerned about the, the pandemic and how it was going to impact our business, just doing the right thing, because it's the right thing to do, just showed that it, it's a great business decision. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, on the other side because of it. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that's uh, business's opportunity to actually do what they say they're going yeah. to do, um, to be there for the community and provide whatever is needed. And then at some point, you know, you, this is a branding exercise that comes back and, and helps your firm, your business out. So that was great to hear that both of you have had success during the pandemic in spite of everything that the whole world has been going through. Um, th this is an interesting question. and. and to everybody watching at home, this is something I asked Davis. Said, is this okay if I ask you this question? Because uh, many people don't want to talk about money. But he said, yeah, let's have at it. Uh, how much of a marketing budget should a personal injury lawyer plan to spend in a year? And how much of that should, should be allocated to grassroots activities? Yeah, 
Great question. And, and, you know, let me begin with this. And I say this a bunch. You probably heard me say this a time or two. Many, not just firms, I won't just pick on, on, on the legal industry, but most folks that embark in marketing, it's expensive and it's only getting more expensive by the day. But if you look at it as an expense, you, you've, you've already kind of set yourself uh, back um, out the gate. Marketing isn't an, isn't an expense, it's an investment. So when you, uh, you know, approach it with that mindset, now you know it's a long-term play. So, so going back to your, your direct question, I, I think grassroots is, is highly underserved in today's market. And, and I understand because it's a digital age and we all are, you know, transitioning and trying to, you know, kind of, you know, keep up with the competition, right? Much of what law firms, what I've kind of grown to understand, uh, they, they're very reactive, uh, not proactive. And so they, they look at their competitors and they react, right? Because they said, if, if XYZ firm down the road is doing this, then we must, we have to do the same thing to stay competitive. Uh, I like to say that infinity marketing is, is the future. And, and, and what I mean by that is having a complementary marketing approach where it's it's not just one channel. If you can be balanced with a nice digital marketing strategy complemented by some traditional now, if billboards are a little bit too expensive, there's other ways that you can really tap into the traditional strategies such as uh, radio spots and, and other mediums that's more affordable to you. And then, of course, what we're talking about today, I, I'm a huge fan of, of course, is grassroots. Grassroots uh, used to, I mean, you know, I've been doing this for a while, and and, and that, that that was the way to go back in, like, you know, late 90s and early 2000s, man. We were in, in our in our vehicles and calling on, you know, businesses and getting the first appointments and setting up the second appointments and, you know, obviously and all that good stuff. But that has fallen to the wayside, just like cold calling. But I, I don't want to digress so much. But if you can, if you can really go back to the basics, I talk about this a lot. Going back to the basics, and that's grassroots, because we know that word of mouth, um, uh, uh, you know, marketing is 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 king in, in in many respects to to doing what the end game of uh, the other mediums are, are are initially trying to accomplish. And what I mean by that is through your social strategy, through your traditional strategy. Through your, your 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 digital marketing strategy, what is the end goal? You 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 want people to like and trust you, and to uh, you know do business with you, right? So I think I think all of that is is actually promoting word of mouth and re, a referral to to you uh, to trust you to sign up and partner with with your business. So if you can go ahead and, and set forth a, a strong grassroots strategy now. For some of the smaller firms, they may say, Dave, you know what? We don't have the resources. But you know what? You do. Your resource is yourself. Your resource uh, are the employees in your office. You know, go, go out and, and, and be a part of some local community, you know, feeding, you know, the underserved, uh, uh, partnering with different, uh, you know, health drives in the community. There's so many countless community events. See, a lot of, a lot of the challenge with marketing, you think that you need to do something that's directly tied to your business. But at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, what's most important is, is reaching the community. Because if you're doing business in that area, they need to know who you are. They need to know that XYZ firm, you know, they care about me. You know, they're, they're putting me first at, at all instances. I see them in the community. They're rolling up their sleeves. They're exactly where we're at and build, building those meaningful relationships. I think you get ahead there. So if you want a percentage breakdown, I think at the least 30% of what you do should be tied into grassroots and there's all type of creative ways to get it done and a lot of them free right oh most of them free yeah <laughs> most of them you know, we did a huge uh, a bike giveaway we're at sturgis right now you guys can check that out and you know it's one of the largest prizes we've ever given away i want to tell you how much that bike is worth we put so much money into it law tigers didn't cost us anything but relationships bring it in bike builders that brings on different parts. And so, you know, and we get someone to donate the bike. So everyone wins because we market together. And that's what partnership referral marketing, co, co uh, uh, branding and marketing is all about. Yep. Uh, Susan, we were talking uh, earlier about some social media activity that you've seen be effective for some law firms. Can you give some examples 
of, of some law firms that you've seen have really effective social media strategies? Yeah, so I've seen great marketing efforts through Instagram um, over the last year, just seeing many more attorneys posting on Instagram. And I think it's fun because we're getting to see um, who they are in a, in a more, you know, kind of in their environment and it's relatable and you almost feel like you're getting to know them a little bit. For instance, Gregory, we, we know the guy likes to eat at um, nice restaurants, always eating great food and good wine. So um, that's always fun to see where is he, you know, what's the next, the new restaurant that he's at. It's always somewhere new too. So that's fun. Um, and then Jason Webster, he's always on some really cool hunt. Um, so that's kind of fun to watch him and his kiddos. And, um, and then Seth Meyer, I always just wonder if he actually works because he's always laying around on the beach or skiing or doing something fun. So not sure. But anyway, no, my point is, is that I'm seeing a lot more marketing done on Instagram. And I think that's a really fun way um, to get to know people. And, and like what Dave said, you know, you got to get to know people for um, for them to trust you. And so it's really cool to see them not just in their suit and tie and, you know, just the corporate post and whatever award that they just won posted on LinkedIn. You know, we're getting to see them and their family and, and what they like to do. And and um, so that's been really fun to watch. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. That's um, that's a, a great way for firms at no cost to show off who they are, uh, who the partners are, and earn the trust of, of their audiences and potential customers. So um, I want to thank you both for joining us today, Susan, Dave. Uh, Dave, if, if someone is interested in learning more about Law Tigers or wants to reach out to you, uh, what's your contact information? How should they do so? Yeah, uh, lawtigersmarketing.com. Uh, you can reach me directly at dave at lawtigers.com, dave at lawtigers.com. And, you know, I always love to talk and discuss marketing. I really, truly love what, what we do here. And uh, niche marketing, uh, you know, motorcycle cases are, are, are highly sought after amongst personal injury attorneys. And right now we have about 27 markets available. So we'd love to talk to you if you're, you're interested. And, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me again on your show, uh, John. Thoroughly enjoyed it myself and definitely enjoyed spending some time with you, Susan, and getting to know you better as well. Yes, thanks so much, Dave, for, for joining us. And Susan, if, if our audience wants to learn more about Caseworks, where should they go? Yeah, I'd be thrilled to talk to anyone. Um, they can read, they can look at a little bit more about our services and what we do and what we offer at yourcaseworks.com. And then they can reach out to me directly at Susan at yourcase.works. Excellent. Thank you both for joining us. Um, everyone, please go ahead and you can follow us on LinkedIn. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Stay tuned for some more future episodes here. We'll have some great guests coming up and some great episodes. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure.